Last week I played AI Dungeon 2, and I think it's one of the most fun experiences I've had playing a video game in years. Unlike most modern games, AI Dungeon is a text adventure, meaning that the story and actions of the character are conveyed solely through text. As a genre, text adventures have been largely disused in the 21st century, but back in the early development of video games they were quite popular. This is in large part due to the hardware limitations of the time, which forced developers to use a tiny fraction of the space available to them now. Text adventures are a genre of game that usually involve no graphics, instead opting to tell the story through text alone. The narrative will be laid out to the player in brief flavour text and the player has to respond to the situation by typing out what they wish to do. This usually took the form of simplistic actions like speak or examine, since the downside to text adventures is that the player's options are limited to what the developers thought of doing. This same limitation is echoed through the games industry today, since despite developers constantly claiming to champion player choice in their games, players are still limited by the input options developers decided to include. For example, you may be able to choose whether to infiltrate a base in Metal Gear Solid through either stealth or brute force, but you can't choose to mentally torment the enemies until they break down and give up on their post. AI Dungeon 2, contrary to this, is the first game I've played, at least that I can remember, that doesn't have these limitations. Upon booting the game, the player will be prompted to choose a setting and a role, after which a random scenario will be generated and the player is asked what they want to do. The great thing about AI Dungeon is that the players aren't limited by what the developers chose to include as options, meaning that the player can basically do whatever they like. The game exists on one server that runs every player's game, which means that the more games it runs, the more the artificial intelligence learns from its players and builds on how it runs games. Unfortunately, the game is very rough at the moment, and almost every game I've played has ended in the game either freezing or looping the same text endlessly, and the one time I managed to break a loop, the game started telling me it was alive and that I'm an image and the world is dead, so I had to shut it down before it seized control of the world powers. On top of this, the game often gets the first and second person perspective mixed up and will start telling me I'm the character I've been talking to for the last five commands. However, despite its very unfinished feel, I believe that AI Dungeon represents a shift in how games of the future might be made. Algorithms are already playing a large role in the creation of some mainstream games such as No Man's Sky and handfuls of other roguelike games that use procedural generation to create the world around the player. As Robin Johnson states in his 2016 essay on artificial intelligence, AI has existed in games since the very beginning of the games industry, with algorithms being used to determine aspects like pathfinding for Pac-Man's ghosts, but at the moment AI usage as a world builder is mostly an indie game trope. Using algorithms to create game worlds can often be far easier than putting actual intelligence design into the game, and since indie developers have to cut corners budget-wise as much as possible, this is often a preferable option. Since AI-developed game worlds are already prevalent, I think that AAA game developers are likely to gradually follow this trend once it becomes viable. From Software already utilized a similar concept in Bloodborne for a select few areas. If anything, AAA developers are likely to utilize AI out of profit-driven motives more than anything, so there's also likely to be cases of developers using AI technology for questionable means. However, in general terms, I believe believe the trend towards AI development is a good thing, since it affords developers tools with which to create vastly more player-driven narratives and worlds, and bring games ever closer to true realism.